From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass is made possible with a contribution from three donors. The first is Patricia O'Connell from Belleville, Ontario, in loving memory of her husband, Frank, and in thanksgiving for the blessings of the daily TV Mass, which gave Frank such great comfort. The second is Doreen Moher from Belleville, Ontario, for the 25th wedding anniversary of Robert and Sandra Moher, in thanksgiving for the daily TV Mass and for the healing of a family member. The third are anonymous donors from Oakville, Ontario, for all those affected by the COVID-19 virus, including all healthcare workers, also for deceased members of their families and for their children and their families. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, as we are gathered, we celebrate the memorial feast of St. Cornelius, and St. Cyprian, who were martyrs for their faith. Sometimes in our lives, we don't measure up to the standard of the other. And in such a situation, we have a tendency not to see the goodness of the other, but to bring them down. As we are gathered to celebrate this liturgy, let us ask God's forgiveness for those moments where we have failed to appreciate the other. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Maria, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gave saints Cornelius and Cyprian, to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. 
But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Praise the Lord with a lie. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Happy the people of the Lord and to be his own. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us even as we hope in you. Happy the people the Lord has chosen to be his The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke these words to the crowds. To what then will I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? 
They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come, eating no bread and drinking no wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. To whom shall I compare you? Jesus is struck by the reaction of the people and says, what comparison then can I find for the people of this generation? What are they like? We may have come across in our own lives that at times when something is very evident, but people fail to perceive it. Instead of praising the good works, they find fault. Sometimes people have a tunnel view of things. It is like this man who took his new hunting dog on a trial hunt one day. After a while, he managed to shoot a duck, and it fell in the lake. The duck walked over on the water and picked up the duck and brought it to his master. The man was stunned. He didn't know what to think. He shot another duck, and again it fell into the lake, and again the duck walked over the water and brought it back to his master. He could not believe his eyes, but at the same time he was not willing to tell anyone and make himself of a fool, because who is going to believe that a duck walked on the water? So as but the next day, he called his neighbor to go for hunting with him. As on the previous day, he shot a duck, and the duck fell on the water, and the duck walked over and brought it back. His neighbor didn't say a word. Several more ducks got shot that day, and each time the duck walked over the water and retrieved them. And each time the neighbor said nothing and neither did the owner of the dock. Finally, unable to contain himself any longer, the owner asked his neighbor, do you notice anything strange about my dock? Yes, replied the neighbor, rub rubbing his chin and thinking a bit, come to think of it, I do. Your dog doesn't know how to swim. Jesus compares the people of his time to children. He says that children at play were not more wayward, stubborn, and hard to please than the Jews of his day. Nothing would satisfy them. They were always finding fault. First came John the Baptist, living an ascetic life, self-denying life. At once they said, he has a demon. After him, the Son of Man comes, eating and drinking and adopting habits of social life like any other people. At once, they called him a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. In short, it became evident that the Jews were determined to receive no message from God. They were not going to accept who Jesus was. Perhaps we read this account with wonder and surprise. We think, how could they be so blind not to see what was happening? He did so many miracles, which is unimaginable. But we need to be careful in pointing the finger at these people. The Gospels presents each of us a challenge, even today. Do we have the willingness to accept the similar things that are going around us, even in our present day, within each of us. Where we fail to see the goodness of the other, rather we are very quick to find out their faults. 
strange as it may seem, at first sight, the generation which will neither dance when their companions pipe nor lament when they mourn is only too numerous in the 21st century of our time. The message of God comes as a challenge to our easygoing life. We tend to reject God's message because it demands justice, it demands mercy, it demands forgiveness. The plain truth is, oftentimes, in the secret of our heart, we want revenge. We want the worldly justice to be fulfilled. We want our offenders to be punished. We call ourselves Christians for years and years. But the question is, are we receptive to the word of God in our lives? The scriptures of today is a timely reminder for each of us to examine ourselves. If Jesus were to be here today, what would we say of our generation? Do we find ourselves at times weak in faith, discouraged by the atmosphere and culture around us? Can we call our generation receptive to the word of God? Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions. Let's pray for ourselves, for the Spirit of God to work in us, that we may have the willingness to see the goodness of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of God, for our family members and friends, that we may continue to grow in faith, grow in love, grow in mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all of those in the daily TV Mass community who are dedicated to the care of the sick, may they receive the grace to continue their ministry of compassion and caring with hope and joy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the students, teachers, and families who have begun the school year, we pray for your love, for love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us take a moment to bring our own needs. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we bring before you through the intercession of St. Cyprian and Cornelius that you may continue to listen to us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and your words may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, saints Cornelius and Cyprian, and may the gifts that gave them courage under persecution Make us too steadfast in all trials. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just with duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, Cyprian and Cornelius, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness. 
And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son, I in the highest, O Son, I in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son, I in the highest, O Son, I in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life on the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Cyprian and Cornelius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Of the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope on the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take with the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With those of you at home, join with me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, St. Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your spirit to bear witness to the truth of the gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Oh, my hope on God is fountain. Oh, my trust he shall be. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of ourselves. God unknown, He alone, cause my heart to 